Swami Narayan IAST Swaminarayana the 3rd of April 1781 to the 1st of June 1830 also known as Sahajanand Swami was a yogi and an ascetic whose life and teachings brought a revival of central Hindu practices of dharma ahimsa and brahmacharya he is believed by followers as a manifestation of God. Swami Narayan was born Ganshiam Pand in Chapaya, Uttar Pradesh, India in 1781. In 1792, he began a seven year pilgrimage across India at the age of 11 years, adopting the name Nilkanth Varni. During this journey, he did welfare activities and after nine years and eleven months of this journey, he settled in the state of Gujarat around 1799. In 1800, he was initiated into the Yudhav Sampradaya by his guru, Swami Ramanand, and was given the name Sahajanand Swami. In 1802, his guru handed over the leadership of the Yudhav Sampraday to him before his death. Sahajanand Swami held a gathering and taught the Swaminarayan mantra. From this point onwards, he was known as Swaminarayan. The Yudhav Sampraday became known as the Swaminarayan Sampraday. Swaminarayan developed a good relationship with the British Raj. He had followers not only from Hindu denominations but also from Islam and Zoroastrianism. He built six temples in his lifetime and appointed 500 Paramahamsas to spread his philosophy. In 1826, Swaminarayan wrote the Shikshapatri, a book of social principles. He died on 1 June 1830 and was cremated according to Hindu rites in Gadada, Gujarat. Before his death, Swaminarayan appointed his adopted nephews as acharyas to head the two dioceses of Swaminarayan Sampraday. Swaminarayan is also remembered within the sect for undertaking reforms for women and the poor, and performing non-violent yajñas fire sacrifices on a large scale. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Childhood as Ganshiam. Swami Narayan was born on the 3rd of April 1781, Sud 9, Samvat 1837, in Chapaya, Uttar Pradesh, a village near Ayodhya, in a Hindi-speaking region in India. Born into the Brahmin or priestly caste of Sarvariya, Swami Narayan was named Ganshiam Pand by his parents, Hari Prasad Pand, father, also known as Dharmadev, and Premvati Pand, mother, also known as Bhaktamata and Murtidevi. The birth of Swami Narayan coincided with the Hindu festival of Rama Navami, celebrating the birth of Rama. The ninth lunar day in the fortnight of the waxing moon in the month of Kshetra March to April, is celebrated as both Rama Navami and Swaminarayan Janti by Swaminarayan followers. This celebration also marks the beginning of a ritual calendar for the followers. Swaminarayan had an elder brother, Rampratap Pand, and a younger brother, Ikcharam Pand. He is said to have mastered the scriptures, including the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas, the Ramayana, and the Mahabharata by the age of seven. <laughs> Travels as Nilkanth Varni After the death of his parents, Ganshiam Pand left his home on 29 June 1792 at the age of 11. He took the name Nilkanth Varni while on his journey. Nilkanth Varni travelled across India and parts of Nepal in search of an ashram, or hermitage, that practised what he considered a correct understanding of Vedanta, Samkhya, Yoga, and Pankaratra, the four primary schools of Hindu philosophy. To find such an ashram, Nilkanth Varni asked the following five questions on the basic Vaishnava Vedanta categories What is Jiva? What is Ishvara? What is Maya? What is Brahman? 
What is Para Brahman? While on his journey, Nilkanth Varni mastered Astanga yoga, eightfold yoga in a span of nine months under the guidance of an aged yogic master named Gopal Yogi. In Nepal, it is said that he met King Rana Bahadur Shah and cured him of his stomach illness. As a result, the king freed all the ascetics he had imprisoned. Nilkanth Varni visited the Jagannath Temple in Puri as well as temples in Badrinath, Rameshwaram, Nashik, Dwarka, and Pandharpur. In 1799, after a seven year journey, Nilkanth's travels as a yogi eventually concluded in Loj, a village in the Junagadh district of Gujarat. In Loj, Nilkanth Varni met Muktanand Swami, a senior disciple of Ramanand Swami. Muktanand Swami, who was 22 years older than Nilkanth, answered the five questions to Nilkanth's satisfaction. Nilkanth decided to stay for the opportunity to meet Ramanand Swami, whom he met a few months after his arrival in Gujarat. He later claimed in the Vaknamru that during this period, he took up a severe penance to eliminate his mother's flesh and blood from his body so that the sign of his physical attachment to family, was completely removed. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership as Sahajanand Swami According to the sect, Nilkanth's understanding of the metaphysical and epistemological concepts of the Pancha Tattvas five eternal elements, together with his mental and physical discipline, inspired senior sadhus of Ramanand Swami. Nilkanth Varni received sannyasa initiation from Ramanand Swami on 20 October 1800, and with it was granted the names Sahajanand Swami and Narayan Muni to signify his new status. At the age age of 21, Sahajanand Swami was appointed successor to Ramanand Swami as the leader of the Yudhav Sampraday by Ramanand Swami, prior to his death. The Yudhav Sampraday henceforth came to be known as the Swaminarayan Sampraday. According to sources he proclaimed the worship of one sole deity, Krishna or Narayana. Krishna was considered by him his own Ista Devada. In contrast with the Vaishnava sect known as the Radha Vallabha Sampradaya, he had a more puritanical approach, rather than the theological views of Krishna that are strongly capricious in character and imagery. While being a worshipper of Krishna, Swaminarayan rejected licentious elements in Krishnology in favor of worship in the mood of majesty, alike to earlier Vaisnava teachers, Ramanuja and Yamunakarya. Sahajanand Swami was later known as Swaminarayan after the mantra he taught at a gathering, in Phaneni, a fortnight after the death of Ramanand Swami. He gave his followers a new mantra, known as the Swaminarayan mantra, to repeat in their rituals, Swaminarayan. When chanting this mantra, some devotees went into samadhi a form of meditation. This act is also called Maha Samadhi, Great Samadhi, and claimed that they could see their personal gods, even though they had no knowledge of Astanga Yoga. Swaminarayan also became known by the names Ganshiyam Maharaj, Shriji Maharaj, Hari Krishna Maharaj and Sri Hari. As early as 1804, Swaminarayan, who was reported to have performed miracles, was described as a manifestation of God in the first work written by a disciple and Paramhansa, Nishkulanan Swami. This work, the Yama Danda, was the first piece of literature written within the Swaminarayan sect. Swaminarayan encouraged his followers to combine devotion and dharma to lead a pious life. Using Hindu texts and rituals to form the base of his organization, Swaminarayan founded what in later centuries would become a global organization with strong Gujarati roots. He was particularly strict on the separation of sexes in temples. Swaminarayan was against the consumption of meat, alcohol or drugs, adultery, suicide, animal sacrifices, criminal activities and the appeasement of ghosts and tantric rituals. Alcohol consumption was forbidden by him even for medicinal purposes. Many of his followers took vows before becoming his disciple. 
He stated that four elements need to be conquered for ultimate salvation, dharma, bhakti devotion, nana knowledge, and vairagya detachment. Doctrinally, Swaminarayan was close to 11th century philosopher Ramanuja and was critical of Shankaracharya's concept of Advaita, or monistic non dualism. Swaminarayan's ontology maintained that the Supreme Being is not formless and that God always has a divine form. <laughs> <laughs> Work and views Women Swaminarayan insisted that education was the inherent right of all people, including women, despite considerable criticism from those in his own contemporary society who loathed the uplift of lower caste women. At that time, influential and wealthy individuals educated their girls through private and personal tuition. Male followers of Swaminarayan made arrangements to educate their female family members. The literacy rate among females began to increase during Swaminarayan's time, and they were able to give discourses on spiritual subjects. Members of the sect consider Swaminarayan a pioneer of education of females in India, according to the author Raymond Brady Williams. Swaminarayan is an early representative of the practice of advocacy of women's rights without personal involvement with women." To counter the practice of sati self-immolation by a widow on her husband's funeral pyre, Swaminarayan argued that, as human life was given by God it could be taken only by God, and that sati had no Vedic sanction. He went to the extent to call sati nothing but suicide. Swami Narayan offered parents help with dowry expenses to discourage female infanticide, calling infanticide a sin. For calling a halt to these prevailing practices, Swami Narayan's contemporaries naturally saw in him a pioneer of a reformed and purified Hinduism, and Swami Narayan Hinduism an Ingrazi Dharma or British religion. Professor David Harman observed that Swami Narayan criticized the popular Shakta cults and Gose and Nath ascetics for the contemptuous and instrumental way in which they viewed and treated women. These cults were often responsible for gross sexual abuse of women." Hardiman added that Swaminarayan's view towards women was not in line with this type of misogyny and was rooted in his desire to prevent ill treatment of women along with promoting celibacy for ascetics. Swaminarayan, "...forbade all sadhus and sadvis that is, male and female ascetics of his sect from having any contact whatsoever with members of the opposite sex." This strict precept was one he likely internalized. After travelling as an ascetic throughout India when, he was reported to vomit if approached by even the shadow of a woman. To help his male ascetic followers maintain their vow of celibacy, Swaminarayan taught the woman who attracts attention is made up of bones, blood vessels, spittle, blood, mucus and feces, she is simply a collection of these things, and there is nothing to be attractive. Members of the faith are defensive of the fact that some practices seem to restrict women and make gender equality in leadership impossible. They are only permitted to enter special sections of the temple reserved for women or have to go to separate women's temples. As with practices of nidda in Orthodox Judaism, concepts of pollution associated with the menstrual cycle lead to the exclusion of women from the temples and daily worship during the affected time. Swaminarayan also directed male devotees not to listen to religious discourses given by women. In case of widows, Swaminarayan directed those who could not follow the path of chastity to remarry. For those who could, he lay down strict rules which included them being under the control of male members of the family. This may seem regressive, however, it gave them a respected and secure place in the social order of the time. 
Swami Narayan restricted widows to live always under the control of male members of their family and prohibited them from receiving instruction in any science from any man excepting their nearest relations. Caste system and the poor After assuming the leadership of the Sampraday, Swami Narayan worked to assist the poor by distributing food and drinking water. He undertook several social service projects and opened almshouses for the poor. Swami Narayan organized food and water relief to people during times of drought. The faith largely had excluded the mass of the poor, such as marginal peasants, agricultural laborers, the informal sector working class, Adivasis and Dalits. Dalits were banned from Swaminarayan temples from the beginning, though in one case a separate temple was created for their use. Some suggest that Swaminarayan worked towards ending the caste system, allowing everyone into the Swaminarayan Sampraday. However partaking in the consumption food of lower castes and caste pollution was not supported by him. A political officer in Gujarat, Mr. Williamson reported to Bishop Herber that Swaminarayan had "...destroyed the yoke of caste." He instructed his paramhansas to collect alms from all sections of society and appointed people from the lower strata of society as his personal attendants. Members of the lower castes were attracted to the movement as it improved their social status. Swaminarayan would eat along with the lower Rajput and Khadi castes but not any lower. He established separate places of worship for the lower caste population where they were in large numbers. However, Dalits, those outside of the caste system, were formally excluded from Swaminarayan temples. Members of a lower caste are prohibited from wearing a full sect mark on their forehead. Even now, however, for the vast majority of Gujarat's lower caste, untouchable and tribal population, the sect is out of bounds. Reginald Eber, the Lord Bishop of Calcutta, noted that disciples of Swaminarayan cut across all castes, and even included Muslims. He writes, they all pray to one God with no difference of castes. They live as if they were brothers." Furthermore, in a meeting with Swaminarayan, he noted that, "...Swaminarayan did not regard the subject as of much importance, but that he wished not to give offence to ancient Hindu system, that people might eat separately or together in this world, but that above." Oapur. Pointing to heaven, those distinctions would cease. Swami Narayan worked thus to dispel the myth that moksha salvation was not attainable by everyone. He taught that the soul is neither male nor female, nor yoked to any specific caste. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Animal sacrifices and yagnas. Swaminarayan was against animal sacrifices as carried out by Brahmin priests during Vedic rituals, such as yajnas fire sacrifices, influenced by the Kala and Vama Marg cults. The priests consumed, sanctified, prasad in the form of meat of these animals. To solve this problem, Swaminarayan conducted several large-scale yajnas involving priests from Varanasi. These did not have animal sacrifices and were conducted in strict accordance with Vedic scriptures. Swami Narayan was successful in reinstating Ahimsa through several such large-scale yajnas. Swami Narayan stressed lacto-vegetarianism among his followers and forbade meat consumption, codifying the conduct in the Shikshapatri. Establishing law and order of Gujarat During the time when Swaminarayan came to Gujarat, the law and order situation of Gujarat was in worst ever. Neither British government nor local kings were able to control the robberies, killings, internal conflicts, rapes, and other uncultured events in Kathiawar, Kutch and Gujarat. 
Upon reaching to Gujarat, Swaminarayan by his preaching and supernatural divine power restored noted notorious criminals as normal civilians. These criminals left their evil nature and started living life with high moral values to the extent that they would never rob, or kill any living being. Even they would not see the unknown women or would not drink alcohol and be strict vegetarian. Bombay Governor Sir Malcolm was impressed by social reforms of Swaminarayan and so had come down to Raikat to meet Swaminarayan personally and to appreciate his work towards educating high moral values to the people of Gujarat and helping British government in reducing criminal graph of Gujarat. Swaminarayan had vowed not to kill the evil people but to kill their evil nature. The Bishop of Calcutta also noted that Swaminarayan preached a great degree of purity, forbidding his disciples so much as to not look on any woman whom they passed. He condemned theft and bloodshed, and those villages and districts which had received him, from being among worst, were now among the best and most orderly in the provinces. Temples and ascetics Swaminarayan ordered the construction of several Hindu temples and he had built six huge temples by himself and installed the idols of various deities such as Nara Narayana in two temples, Laxminarayan Dev, Gopinathja Maharaj, Radha Raman Dev and Madanmohan Lalji. The images in the temples built by Swaminarayan provide evidence of the priority of Krishna. Disciples of Swaminarayan composed devotional poems which are widely sung by the tradition during festivals. Swaminarayan introduced fasting and devotion among followers. He conducted the festivals of Vasant Panchami, Holi, and Janmash Tasami with organization of the traditional folk dance Raas. The first temple Swaminarayan constructed was in Ahmedabad in 1822, with the land for construction given by the British Imperial Government. Following a request of devotees from Bhuj, Swaminarayan asked his follower Vaishnavananand to build a temple there. Construction commenced in 1822, and the temple was built within a year. A temple in Vadtal followed in 1824, a temple in Dolera in 1826, a temple in Junagadh in 1828 and a temple in Gadada, also in 1828. By the time of his death, Swaminarayan had also ordered construction of temples in Muli, Dolka, and Jetalpur. From early on, ascetics have played a major role in the Swaminarayan sect. They contribute towards growth and development of the movement, encouraging people to follow a pious and religious life. Tradition maintains that Swaminarayan initiated 500 ascetics as Paramhansis in a single night. Paramhansa is a title of honor sometimes applied to Hindu spiritual teachers who are regarded as having attained enlightenment. Paramhansas were the highest order of sannyasi in the sect. Prominent Paramhansas included Muktanand Swami, Gopalanand Swami, Brahmanand Swami, Gunatitanand Swami, Premanand Swami, Nishkulanand Swami, and Nityanand Swami. Topic. Scriptures Swaminarayan propagated general Hindu texts. He held the Bhagavata Purana in high authority. However, there are many texts that were written by Swaminarayan or his followers that are regarded as shastras or scriptures within the Swaminarayan sect. Notable scriptures throughout the sect include the Shikshapatri and the Vachanamaru. Other important works and scriptures include the Satsangi Jivan, Swami Narayan's authorized biography, the Muktanand Kavya, the Nishkalanand Kavya and the Bhakta Chintamani. <laughs> Shikshapatri Swami Narayan wrote the Shikshapatri on of February 1826. 
While the original Sanskrit manuscript is not available, it was translated into Gujarati by Nityanand Swami under the direction of Swaminarayan and is revered in the sect. The Gazetteer of the Bombay Presidency summarized it as a book of social laws that his followers should follow. A commentary on the practice and understanding of Dharma, it is a small booklet containing 212 Sanskrit verses, outlining the basic tenets that Swaminarayan believed his followers should uphold in order to live a well-disciplined and moral life. The oldest copy of this text is preserved at the Bidleian Library of Oxford University and it is one of the very few presented by Sahajanand Swami himself. Acharya Tajendraprasad of Ahmedabad has indicated in a letter that he is not aware of any copy from the hand of Sahajanand older than this text. Swaminarayan in various places of Shikshapatri describes Sri Krishna as the greatest entity. In Shikshapatri Slok 1 and 108 are few places that mentions that Swaminarayan prayed on Sri Krishna. Shikshapatri Slok 1 Vame yasya stita radha srisca yasya sti vaksasi vrindavanavaharam tam srikrsnam hrdi sintai 1 Translation, with all my heart, I meditate on Sri Krishna, who resides in the divine abode Vrindavan, with Radha on his left and Sri residing within his heart. Shikshapatri Slok 108 also mentions that Sri Krishna is the greatest entity. Sa Srikrsna Parambrahma Bhagavan Purasatama Upasya Istadevo na Sarvavarbhavakaranam 108 Translation, The Lord, Sri Krishna is the greatest entity. I admire him the most. He is the cause of all incarnations and is thus truly worthy to be worshipped. Vachanamru Swaminarayan's philosophical, social and practical teachings are contained in the Vachanamru, a collection of dialogues recorded by five prominent saints Muktanand Swami, Gopalanand Swami, Nityanand Swami, Shukanand Muni, and Brahmanand Swami from his spoken words. The Vachanamru is the scripture most commonly used in the Swaminarayan sect. It contains views on dharma, moral conduct, jnana, understanding of the nature of the self, vairagya, detachment from material pleasure, and bhakti, pure selfless devotion to god. The four essentials Hindu scriptures describe as necessary for a jiva, soul, to attain moksha, salvation. Topic: <laughs> Satsangi Jivan Satsangi Jivan is the authorized biography of Swaminarayan. The book contains information on the life and teachings of Swaminarayan. It is written by Shatanand Swami and completed in Vikram Samvat 1885. Swaminarayan decided to make Gadada his permanent residence on the insistence of Dada Kachar and his sisters. Swami Narayan instructed Shatanand Swami to write a book on his life and pastimes, to enable Shatanand Swami to write from his childhood. Swami Narayan had blessed Shatanand Swami with Sanjay Drishti, special power to see the entire past right from his childhood. Once written by Shatanand Swami, this book was verified and authenticated by Swami Narayan. He was much pleased to read the book. Swaminarayan then asked his disciples to do katha of Satsangi Jivan. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi on Swaminarayan In relation to Swaminarayan's work and views, Gandhi remarked that the work accomplished by Swaminarayan in Gujarat could not and would never have been achieved by the law. Scholars note close parallels between Gandhi's work and Swaminarayan's work related to non-violence, truth-telling, hygiene, temperance, and the uplift of masses. Commenting on Gandhi's social work, N.A. Tuthi most of his thought, activities and even methods of most of the institutions which he has been building up and serving, have the flavor of Swaminarayanism, more than that of any other sect of Hindu Dharma. 
He however did not feel that Swaminarayan's values aligned perfectly with his interpretation of Vaishnavism. <laughs> Relations with other religions and the British government Swaminarayan strived to maintain good relationships with people of other religions, sometimes meeting prominent leaders. His followers cut across religious boundaries, including people of Muslim and Parsi backgrounds. Swaminarayan's personal attendants included Koja Muslims. In Kathiawad, many Muslims wore Kanthi necklaces given by Swaminarayan. He also had a meeting with Reginald Eber, Lord Bishop of Calcutta and a leader of Christians in India at the time. Bishop Eber mentions in his account of the meeting that about 200 disciples of Swaminarayan accompanied him as his bodyguards mounted on horses and carrying matchlocks and swords. Bishop Eber himself had about a hundred horse guards accompanying him 50 horses and 50 muskets and mentioned that it was humiliating for him to see two religious leaders meeting at the head of two small armies, his being the smaller contingent. As a result of the meeting, both leaders gained mutual respect for one another. Swaminarayan enjoyed a good relationship with the British imperial government. The first temple he built, in Ahmedabad, was built on 5,000 acres 20 square kilometers of land given by the government. The British officers gave it a 101-gun salute when it was opened. It was in an 1825 meeting with Reginald Eber that Swaminarayan is said to have intimated that he was a manifestation of Krishna. Template, RP equals 81 in 1830. Swaminarayan had a meeting with Sir John Malcolm, Governor of Bombay. 1827 to 1830. According to Malcolm, Swaminarayan had helped bring some stability to a lawless region. During the meeting with Malcolm, Swaminarayan gave him a copy of the Shikshapatri. This copy of the Shikshapatri is currently housed at the Bidleyan Library at University of Oxford. Swaminarayan also encouraged the British Governor James Walker to implement strong measures to stop the practice of sati. <laughs> Death and succession In 1830, Swaminarayan gathered his followers and announced his departure. He later died on 1 June 1830 Jeth Sud 10, Samvat 1886, and it is believed by followers that, at the time of his death, Swaminarayan left earth for Akshardham, his abode. He was cremated according to Hindu rites at Lakshmi Wadi in Gadada. Prior to his death, Swaminarayan decided to establish a line of acharyas or preceptors, as his successors. He established two goddess seats of leadership. One seat was established at Ahmedabad Nar Narayan Dev Gaudi and the other one at Vadtal Lakshmi Narayan Dev Gaudi on 21 November 1825. Swaminarayan appointed an acharya to each of these goddess to pass on his message to others and to preserve his fellowship, the Swaminarayan Sampraday. These acharyas came from his immediate family after sending representatives to search them out in Uttar Pradesh. He formally adopted a son from his brothers and appointed them to the office of acharya. Ayodhya Prasad, the son of Swami Narayan's elder brother Rampratap and Raghuvira, the son of his younger brother Aikcharam, were appointed acharyas of the Ahmedabad Gaudi and the Vadtal Gaudi respectively. Swami Narayan decreed that the office should be hereditary so that acharyas would maintain a direct line of blood descent from his family. The administrative division of his followers into two territorial dioceses is set forth in minute detail in a document written by Swaminarayan called Desh Vibhag Lekh. 
Swaminarayan stated to all the devotees and saints to obey both the Acharyas and Gopalanand Swami, who was considered as the main pillar and chief ascetic for the Sampraday. The current Acharyas of the Swaminarayan Sampraday are Koshalandraprasad Pand, of the Ahmedabad Gaudi, and Rakesh Prasad G. Pand, of the Vadtal Gaudi. Decades after his death, several divisions occurred with different understandings of succession. This included the establishment of Bochazanwasi Shri Akshar Purushottam Swaminarayan Sanstha, Baps, the founder of which left the Vadtal Gaudi in 1905, and Maninagar Swaminarayan Gaudi Sansthan, the founder of which left the Ahmedabad Gaudi in the 1940s. The followers of Baps hold Gunataitanan Swami as the spiritual successor to Swaminarayan, asserting that on several occasions Swaminarayan revealed to devotees that Gunataitanan Swami was Aksharbram manifest. Followers of Baps believe that the Acharyas were given administrative leadership of the sect while Gunataitanan Swami was given spiritual leadership by Swaminarayan. The current spiritual and administrative leader of BAPS is Mahant Swami Maharaj. The followers of the Maninagar Swaminarayan Gaudi Sansthan hold Gopalanand Swami as the successor to Swaminarayan. The current leader of this sect is Purushottam Priyadashi Maharaj. <laughs> Following and manifestation belief According to the biographer Raymond Williams, when Swaminarayan died, he had a following of 1.8 million people. In 2001, Swaminarayan centers existed on four continents, and the congregation was recorded to be 5 million, the majority in the homeland of Gujarat. The newspaper Indian Express estimated members of the Swaminarayan sect of Hinduism to number over 20 million two crore worldwide in 2007. In his discourses recorded in the Vachanamaru, Swaminarayan mentions that humans would not be able to withstand meeting God in his divine form, hence, God takes human form simultaneously living in his abode so people can approach, understand, and love him in the form of an avatar. While no detailed statistical information is available, most of the followers of Swaminarayan share a belief that Swaminarayan is the complete manifestation of Narayana or Purushottam Narayana, the supreme being and superior to other avatars. A Swaminarayan sectarian legend tells how Narayana from the Nara Narayana pair, was cursed by sage Durvasa to incarnate on the earth as Swaminarayan. Some of Swaminarayan's followers believe he was an incarnation of Lord Krishna. The images and stories of Swaminarayan and Krishna have coincided in the liturgy of the sect. The story of the birth of Swaminarayan parallels that of Krishna's birth from the scripture Bhagavata Purana. Swaminarayan himself is said to have intimated that he was a manifestation of God in a meeting with Reginald Eber, the Lord Bishop of Calcutta, in 1825. The belief of many followers that their founder was the incarnation of the Supreme God has also drawn criticism. According to Professor Raymond B. Williams, Swaminarayan was criticized because he received large gifts from his followers and dressed and traveled as a Maharaja even though he had taken the vows of renunciation of the world. Swaminarayan responded that he accepts gifts for the emancipation of his followers. <laughs> Notes and references equals 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 notes <laughs>